Today's topic is the number of trapped beavers in North America over the centuries. The fur trade was a huge part of the early economy of North America, and beaver pelts were king. Beaver pelts were used as a basis for trade between Europeans and native peoples. Many trade goods and other furs had a trade price in made beaver. The historical prices of beaver were dependent on the number of beaver pelts trapped and in turn the number of beaver pelts in warehouses. Eventually, in the late 1800s, beavers were all but eradicated from North America, but were able to make a comeback in the 1900s. This video will put forward the number of beavers trapped from the 1600s through the 1900s. In the 1600s, the French had one of the biggest fur economies. In the early 1600s, the French beaver trade averaged less than 20,000 pelts per year. But by the 1670s, when the English began to be active in the fur trade, the French trade had risen to about 50,000 pelts per year. In the 1680s, the French were involved in a series of clashes with the Iroquois, which seriously disrupted the flow of furs from the western trading posts. But in 1689, a large group of voyagers successfully brought a large supply of furs to Montreal from Michilimackinac in the southern end of the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. This act ended a two-year interruption in trade. Escalation of the war in the 1690s meant that military escorts were sent by the French to protect the fur trading convoys, and the fur trade flourished. The extremely large trade of the 1690s resulted in an excess of beaver pelts on the market, and the warehouses were full. As a result, in 1697, the French court ordered that most fur trade posts be closed, no more trade licenses be issued, and the price of beaver pelts were be reduced in order to clear the inventory of the warehouses. These restrictions were largely ignored. Once again, the fur trade prospered, and many pelts were smuggled to Albany, where the English merchants offered higher prices and superior trade goods. The French restrictions were lifted in 1713, and by 1714, the excess of beaver pelts was gone, as the remaining pelts in the storehouses had been destroyed by rats. Peak decades for the French trade were the 1690s and early 1700s, when average harvests of 145,000 and 181,000 pelts respectively were recorded. The number of pelts traded by the French dropped to an average of 73,000 pelts in the 1710s and the average of 78,000 pelts in the 1720s. During this period, the French were at war with the English and with the Fox tribe from the area west of Lake St. Clair, which seriously disrupted trade in the upper Great Lakes from 1712 to 1716. During the 1720s and 1730s, the French built and operated a series of trading posts, the Posts du Nord, in the uncharted areas of the Hudson Bay Company's posts of York Factory and Fort Albany. These posts were successful in intercepting the Cinnaboyne and Western Cree on their way to the Hudson Bay Company. During the same period, the French expanded their operations to the Mississippi drainage and established a chain of forts from the Gulf of Mexico to Quebec. As a result of these aggressive expansions, the French harvest rose to more than 100,000 pelts per year by the 1730s and remained close to this number until the English takeover of New France in 1760. Another large hand in the harvest of beavers in North America was the English in the form of the Hudson Bay Company and the Northwest Company. In its first decade, the Hudson Bay Company's harvest averaged 44,000 pelts annually. In following decades, the average annual harvest was less than 40,000 until the 1720s and 1730s. The 1720s had an average beaver pelt harvest of 68,000, and the 1730s had an average of 74,000. Partly as a result of interference by the post du Nord, the recorded harvest by the Hudson Bay Company declined in the 1740s and 1750s, and did not rise higher than 56,000 per year until after the merger with the Northwest Company in 1821. Peak harvests occurred in the 1860s and 1870s, when averages of approximately 131,000 and 143,000 pelts per year respectively were recorded. During the years of its existence, 
the Northwest Company's harvest of beavers was much greater than that of the Hudson Bay Company. In the 1780s, the harvested beavers were 128,000, and in the 1790s, 142,000 beavers were harvested. And in the 1800s, 120,000 beavers were harvested. The Northwest Company average pelts per year was three to four times greater than that the size of the Hudson Bay Company's harvest. The Dutch also had a part in the trapping of North America. Harvests of beaver pelts recorded by the Dutch and later by the English at Albany from the 1620s to the 1690s were generally less than 20,000 per year. Although the peak decade of the 1650s had an average harvest of 25,000, those numbers were fairly normal for the early 1600s, but there are reports that contradict. Based on a correspondence of Dutch traders at Albany, there were reports of receiving about 1 million pounds of beaver pelts per year from the Iroquois. Such a huge harvest is highly unlikely, given the number of male Iroquois available to hunt or trap and the amount of area in which they hunted. Even if the Iroquois obtained all their pellets by raiding other tribes, it is highly unlikely that they could have transported that many pellets by canoe to Albany. In addition, the present day harvest for all of North America has rarely exceeded 1 million beavers per year, suggesting that the huge harvest claimed by some Dutch traders were probably false. A few other companies also played a small part in the North American beaver harvest. Harvests recorded for other companies that operated within the boundaries of the present-day U.S. were generally low until the 1760s. For example, the Plymouth and Virginia companies traded fewer than 5,000 beaver pelts per year in the 1620s and 1630s. By the 1760s, various American independents operated in the territory west of the Mississippi River, and by the 1790s, the Spanish were aggressively trading in the Upper Missouri Territory in an attempt to combat expansion by the Hudson Bay Company, the Norwesters, and the Americans. Recorded harvests by the American and Spanish companies reached an annual average of 121,000 pelts in the 1780s and 138,000 in the 1790s. Data is incomplete for many areas of the Southwest, where the American mountain men trapped, so recorded harvests in the 1820s and 18, to 1860s probably underestimate the actual harvest. The beaver harvest in the 1900s was not facilitated by specific governments, but more in the efforts of individuals. Overall, the early 20th century harvest of beavers declined slightly from about 128,000 pellets per year in the 1920s to less than 110,000 per year in the 1930s. This decline in the harvest may represent a true decline in the size of harvestable populations because beavers had been almost exterminated over much of their Canadian and U.S. ranges by 1900. The average annual harvest of beavers then increased to the 1980s harvest of nearly 670,000 per year. This figure probably is due to an increase in the numbers of harvestable animals. The cutting and burning of old forests in Canada during the 19th century released aspen and created an abundant food supply and more surface water bodies, in turn creating an increase in the population size and range expansion of the beaver during the 20th century. In conjunction, the strict conservation measures undertaken in the mid-20th century enabled beaver populations to prosper such that 1980s annual harvests of beavers were greater than ever in recorded history. Although U.S. harvests in the 20th century have increased from about 48,000 pelts per year in the 1930s to more than 270,000 per year in the 1980s, Canadian harvests have dominated the North American harvests of beavers, ranging from 55% of the total harvest in the 1930s to 71% in the 1960s. Following a decline from 128,000 pelts per year in the 1920s to about 59,000 per year in the 1930s, the Canadian harvest steadily increased to more than 415,000 per year in the 1970s. The Canadian harvest averaged about 400,000 pelts in the 1980s. 
Although initially the beaver was the primary fur berry purchased by the fur trade, other species such as the red fox, marten, and muskrat have since increased in importance. Nonetheless, in the mid-1980s, the beaver still ranked fifth in the total value of pelts sold in North America. Since the 1960s, only the muskrat, raccoon, and nutria have been harvested in consistently greater numbers than the beaver. Thank you for watching this video. Let us know what you think of these types of videos in the comments. If you want us to do a video on a specific topic, feel free to comment your idea. If you have any questions or want to know more, feel free to comment and we will do our best to answer. Liking this video and subscribing to the channel truly does help us out. Thanks for watching Outdoor Experiences.